This is Stacy Marshall with Printware Magazine. Matt Masala with the RidingStoneWorld.com. Richard Greaves with ScreenMaking.com. Brian Walker with RTP Apparel. You are listening to the Two Regular Guys Podcast. 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 It's hosted by Terry Combs. Terry Combs. Terry Combs. And Aaron Montgomery. Aaron Montgomery. Aaron Montgomery. Keep on listening. I don't know if these guys are or that regular. <laughs> All right. Well, welcome to the show. It's Friday, June 7th, 2019. I'm Terry Combs, and you can find me at EquipmentZone.com and also at TerryCombs.com. And I'm Aaron Montgomery, and you can find me at AaronMontgomery.info. Today, we're going to be talking with Vic Autry, and uh, he's going to be joining us in just a moment to kind of to kind of to discuss uh, all things e-commerce, selling, Shopify, smart links. And uh, this is some stuff that I'm really excited to learn about and uh, and learn more from uh, Vic on this subject. So uh, really cool stuff. And, and I can't wait to get into that. But uh, definitely got some news items we want to cover here first, Terry. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the folks over at Gildan, uh, they plan to shutter their yarn spinning facility in Georgia. So you we don't like to hear those kinds of things. Uh, no. According to the local news source, Gildan Activewear is closing its yarn spinning plant in Columbus, Georgia, and this is the third U.S. manufacturing facility the company has shuttered in the past uh, 16 months. So the, the Gildan based in Montreal uh, filed a 60-day warning, uh, a, a notice for the Georgia Commerce Department, and expects to shut down production July 27, 2019, so right around the corner, uh, 97 folks losing their jobs over there. Yeah. Um, on a, on a maybe a positive note. Here. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. So, well, you know, we had to put that news in there because we also talked about Fruit of a Loom uh, doing some making some changes. So we have to spread the wealth there. Um, do, uh, we, we will link. In fact, I think Eric's got the link to the uh, article here uh, um, that he posted for us in the comments section. But uh, go, go ahead and read that. I, I think uh, you know they talked about you know moving some people around and some things like that but i think it's just a a sign of some of the changes that are happening you know some of the the folks having to, having to make changes to compete with some of the new folks coming in and and make uh, make things happen so um you know i, I think that's th that's the reason we want to share those things just to kind of give people a, a bigger broader picture of what's happening in the uh, in the world and you know, like you said, you've got uh, some other news here that uh, I, you just told me about this morning. I actually hadn't heard this yet. So this is kind of uh, breaking news by Terry Combs here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and this is something I, I got wind of a couple of weeks ago. And then uh, uh, I'm here in Houston at the ISS show and got an opportunity to talk to some folks. And and uh, it, it appears that Inksoft and Digital Art Solutions are joining forces. And, and Aaron, uh, you, you know, uh, you and I both worked in Tempe, Arizona, both these companies are based in Tempe, Arizona. And yep. Digital Arts used to be, uh, we'd go out our back door and they'd go out their back door and uh, we'd we'd meet in the middle. <laughs> but We'd have like a, a, one of those uh, Anchorman movie type fights. Did we ever do that? I can't remember. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Digital Arts has actually uh, already moved their operation uh, within the Inksoft facility. And uh, we'll have more on this later on. I, I tried to uh, uh, to grab hold of any kind of press release they might have issued. And they said they haven't quite done that yet. But uh, <laughs> according to uh, one of the folks at Inksoft, apparently everybody knows about it uh, from this show. <laughs> so <laughs> so I, I, because I said, hey, I don't want to I don't want to speak out of school. But uh, but if it's, uh, you know, it's, it's certainly a news item. Uh, we have lots of our listeners who who work with both Inksoft and Digital Art Solutions. So I, I think they're pretty excited about the, about what they're going to be able to do together. So. Cool. Uh, so good luck to uh, all the folks over there. Yeah, definitely. So uh, take that handy dandy recorder of yours, Terry, and get over there and uh, get some official comments. We'll uh, we'll play them in the show. There you go. And by the way, uh, and Craig uh, Mertens is uh, staying on board with Digital Art Solutions, uh, and and they will be operating under both their separate names uh, at least okay. for now. So. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah. That was my first question to you this morning. So good stuff. Right. Cool. Well, I've got a couple of notes from uh, our friends over at SGIA that I found in uh, screen on, on at screen web uh, screen printing magazines website. So uh, first one here, teen fashion designer headlines breakfast at printing United. And uh, her name is Ariel Swedro. Uh, she's a 15 year old fashion designer and will start the day on an inspirational note as the women in print Alliance breakfast keynote speaker on October 24th at 7.30 a.m. at the Printing United uh, event happening October 23rd through the 25th in uh, Dallas, Texas there. Uh, and then the other note uh, from SGAA, again, coming out of the, 
the news items at uh, Screen Web, Screen Printing Magazine, uh, is SGIA is now accepting product of the year competition entries. Uh, the SGIA Association, Special Graphics Imaging Association, is accepting entries for its annual product of the year competition through August 2nd. Uh, it's exclusive to Printing United exhibitors, so and it's judged by a panel of industry experts, and the competition awards the leading products in the market across 87 printing categories. So um, I, I, I guess the note in there, Terry, that I, I thought was interesting was uh, exclusive to Printing United exhibitors. So um, I, I, was that the way it's always been with the SGA Expo? Uh, you know, and that's interesting you say that because I, I, I kind of zeroed in on that, on that as well. I don't believe that was the case in the past. Okay. Uh, I, I'm fairly certain. I'm, I'm thinking of some people who had won those those awards in the past who were not exhibitors there. So, hey, you know, uh, the, maybe a good idea on their part. That yeah, uh, yeah, you know, definitely interesting. And and a lot of folks have those you know have those awards sitting in their booth at all all the other events. So, yeah. but you know, uh, back to your first uh, point, Aaron. It, can you even fathom at 15 years old going <laughs> and speaking in front of a, a professional conference? I, I can't yeah. even imagine that. So good, good on her. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's going to be amazing. Uh, obviously, she's uh, quite. Uh, <laughs> quite uh, experienced in in doing lots of things if she's a fashion designer at 15 years old already that's uh, pretty impressive so uh hopefully we get a chance to uh, to meet her if uh, yeah absolutely if that would be yeah. great so hopefully, um hopefully. terry before we go further we do have some folks checking in with us this morning that i just wanted to say good morning to here we've got christine shreve and christine will be joining us next week for our women in uh, printing and, and i think uh, correct me again christine i know i screwed it up last time uh women in decoration i think is uh, is what we're calling it so um jeff is checking in good morning jeff and michelle is checking in from uh, appleton wisconsin so uh, welcome in from wisconsin terry uh, we've uh, got some great listeners for sure Absolutely. And hey, we want to thank all of uh, all of our regular listeners, the regulators and uh, go regulators, hey, go regulators. Exactly <laughs> right. And any new listeners tuning in today, if you have an idea for a future show, uh, go to our contact us page at two, the number two regular guys dot com. Uh, you can reach us also on social media. We are everywhere as to the number two regular guys. And if you are <laughs> catching the live video via Facebook Live, please jump in and participate. Uh, some of our regular listeners are, are also regular uh, participants, and, and we love having your comments and your questions. So, uh, Aaron, with that, let's hear a word from our gold sponsor. This episode of The Two Regular Guys is brought to you by Brighton Leap, makers of the Reggie Award-winning Embrilliance embroidery software. Embrilliance is different. You don't need hardware dongles or to trade active seats for every user. One license lets you run every computer in your shop at once. Embrilliance runs natively on both Mac and Windows. Your single license lets you install on both platforms. Embrilliance is modular. If you only need customizing with lettering, sizing, and recoloring, you can get just that. Embrilliance's unique stitch processing tools even allow you to resize and improve expanded stitch files from digitizers or stock collections for faster running, lighter embroideries. If you decide you need fully featured digitizing, it's fast and easy to add powerful design creation tools to your system. You can start with any tool and build your ideal kit. All Embrilliance programs run standalone, or work together in their unified platform. See the difference for yourself at embrilliance.com. Two regular guys listeners can enter the exclusive code 2RG, that's the number 2RG, at embrilliance.com slash store for 10% off your entire purchase. All right. Well, thanks again to Brighton Leap for their support. And uh, while they're our gold sponsor, we do have other sponsorship opportunities available. You can check those out at 2, the number 2, regularguys.com, being, being a part of two regular guys. All right. Good, good. Well, uh, always welcoming new folks to the regulator family. So that's uh, that's awesome. Uh, we've got uh, Martha checking in, uh, Deborah watching from Arkansas. So we're we're crossing the country. Uh, this, a lot of times we'll have our podcast listeners uh, from all over the world, actually. So very exciting. And we really appreciate you guys tuning in and, and checking things out. And also appreciate you guys supporting our sponsor. And Brilliance is a fantastic company. And uh, the fact that they're giving our listeners an exclusive coupon is a uh, really big deal. So take advantage of that and uh, we'll go from there. Well, Terry, should we uh, get on to our guest here? Let's do. Let's uh, bring in Victor. Victor Autry is a visionary entrepreneur and founder and CEO of iPersonalize. As innovative and creative software developer, 
uh, Victor seeks, or seeks to bring the latest cutting edge uh, personalization technologies to typically available to only larger companies down to smaller companies and startups in the graphics, printing and communication industries. Victor is regarded by his peers as a thought leader in the emerging fourth wave of mass customization, which Victor nice. renames mass personalization since customization is about products and personalization is about people, which is a, a great description, I think. So welcome into the show, Vic. Thank you, glad to be here. Appreciate you guys having me on. All right, well, let's start off with just uh, <clears throat> talking about these waves and, and give us an explanation of the four waves of mass customization. Well, it kind of started back in the 60s and early 70s when uh, modern digital concepts were refined. Uh, and that was the first wave. And then the 70s and up through the 90s where production equipment, digital production equipment was started to be made. The third wave was uh, in the 90s and the early 2000s uh, when software became available uh, that would handle digital production and uh, integrate it with uh, systems and so forth. And so, you know, the fourth wave, I believe, and several other people that I talked to as well around 2011 or so 2010 was when you know entrepreneurs and people that could use all of this cool technology could could embrace uh the concept of what well, really it's one to, they call it one-to-one -one marketing which was uh this is a theory of advertising uh based on peppers and rogers a uh, big consulting group that kind of defined this back in the in the early 90s that you know it's better to market a brand to an individual instead of marketing to uh, say uh, all the bricks in the wall you market to one brick and so it's personalization so it, the fourth wave is people that know how us really that know <laughs> how to use this cool tech digital production technologies and are bringing the strategies and systems online so that uh, you know we can move into the 21st century on this stuff so nice very cool uh, yeah that's a, a very interesting kind of timeline of things and and like i said that uh personalization that's that's our world so uh, it is our world yeah. <laughs> aaron i think uh, our listeners would be disappointed if i don't point out that the fifth wave was a sci-fi movie in 2018. <laughs> <laughs> could very well be <laughs> all right all right well so so vic i, I want to so we we know what we're talking about here with some personalization and and things like that but talk to us about the custom gift marketplace you know what's what's your kind of outlook on that marketplace right now you were telling us before the show you know you were out at ppai and i know you get out and travel yeah. and talk to a lot of shops involved in that market so what's what's your outlook well my i have partners in the uk the custom gateway and i'm their partner here in the us and uh, that implements their software but they did a big uh, they paid for a big study and uh, basically the custom gift market that came back was, it's about $70 billion worldwide. 57% uh, of that was non-personalized products, about $40 billion is what, what they determined. And 43% and growing are about 30 billion was with personalized products. So um, then to break it down even further, 68 was personalized, uh, uh, but non photos and where someone maybe put some text on an name, put text in there, something like that. 32% mm -hmm. were photo gifts, about $10 billion. So all of the personalized side of the equation is growing. Uh, and it just seems, uh, the, the projections are for the next, I don't know, years that anybody can see ahead that it's going to continue to grow five, six, seven, eight percent a year. Nice. Wow. And, and when we're talking about B numbers, billion numbers, those are, yeah, those are those, numbers to talk about. <laughs> those are good numbers. Yeah. 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 Big numbers. So, uh, and, you know, and everybody knows about the, how online uh, retailers are closing their stores. There's been a wave of them here recently. Um, more and more people are going online. And so it's just uh, accelerating that trend. And the millennials uh, that are coming on stream uh, seem to be moving out of the homes and uh, uh, want to buy things for their apartments or wherever they're moving. And so they're buying wall decor arrangements and things like that, that are 
I guess they're putting their pictures on. There's, you know, they do want, they do like selfies. <laughs> so, <laughs> so they would <laughs> they'd probably put their own pictures on the wall. <laughs> uh, but you know, uh, that's part of it, and it's it's really booming. They, those folks take a lot. The younger folks take a lot of pictures, and they're not shy about the technology. Yeah, you know, uh, I, I was taking a look at a presentation that that you had done, Vic, and you, you talked about. Um, you talked about e-commerce sites that do and e-commerce sites that don't have shopping carts. So teach right. us a little bit about smart links. Okay. Yeah. So, well, uh, 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 let me just explain what a smart link is. So, yeah. So there, so everybody will understand a smart link is, is nothing more than a URL. When you look at the top of your browser and you see a, a link up there, that's it. What we're talking about. We're talking about a URL that has been created. Uh, and, and in our case, our smart links, and that's a term that's used by all kinds of people. There, lots of people have smart links. It's not something only we have, but a smart link is is a is a for us is a is a product or a category of products or several categories of products where when they when someone clicks it, it goes to our online designer. Uh, again, if it's for one product. They can uh, decorate the product. They can bring in images. They can add text. Whatever the product is set up to do, uh, and everything as far as personalization is is done at a product level. So a smart link is is just a link to that product. Now, what's different about it, and what's cool is that that one smart link is attached to a shopping cart. So if someone wants to buy that they can hit the add to cart button and it will go it connects to a shopping cart and they can pay for it our system will send the production ready artwork that they the customer created to the owner of that smart link and they can you know they can do what they're going to do with it either they can produce it uh or they can uh, you know they, if they pay for it and they can they can produce it or uh send a proof or whatever they want to do it's, it's very powerful so it's 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 actually a way of selling products without having a full website. And uh, Shopify has uh, you know for nine dollars in Shopify, you can go get a Shopify Lite uh, uh, subscription. It's nine dollars, and basically what they give you is is a smart link. They don't call it that; they call it Shopify Lite. Uh, but you can go in there and set up a product or two. And you will get a URL that you can use and put it on Facebook. You can take, you know, anywhere you can email, anywhere you can put a smart, anywhere you can put a link, you can put this in effect a uh, way for people to buy a product from. And, uh, you know, I, I work with a lot of folks and I'm sure y'all do too. that are trying to get into the business and, and uh, you know, they're, they're, they're trying to learn how to print and they're trying to learn how to do market and they're trying to learn to do the website and they're trying to op you know open up a separate bank account and it's just man it's just it's just a it's a it's a it's a whirlwind of, of things they've got to do and and so you know to me when I we started getting into this about a year or so ago I realized I said you know a lot of folks instead of trying to do uh, full learn how to operate a website and do all of that, and it's not simple, especially when folks want to do it. Oh, I've got to have 500 products. Well, no, you need to you need to sell. You need to make sure you can sell one product before you go buy a bunch of printers and buy <laughs> blank products. <there. laughs> you need to just selling your product. Selling one product would be a good start for you know a lot of people don't ever get there. Yeah, and uh, and so. You know, I just it just seemed to me to be a logical way that a lot of folks could get into it, test their product ideas, send, uh, you know, see if they get some orders for what they have, see if their product ideas work. Uh, maybe start off uh, using a company like Pick the Gift, uh, Aaron, and, and, and sending and sending the orders to them for them to drop ship it for them. You know, that way they don't even they're not even out part of anything except for getting the getting the smart link set up for a couple yeah. hundred bucks. But, you know, it's just a good way to, to go. And um, it just seems to make sense to me. Uh, so there's on the web, you know, you look at, uh, I had done a presentation to the Pro Imaging uh, Conference in Florida back in April. And we were, point there being is that there's 
you know, WordPress, there's zillions and zillions of sites out there that do not have a shopping cart. Okay. They're just, they're called content sites. All the, you know, they're just mm -hmm. there to explain what the company is about. They're not really there to take any orders. And then you have e-commerce sites that are, that do have shopping carts. Yeah. So you, what you could do with a smart link, if, if you were getting started and you just had a simple, uh, you know, uh, Wix site, you know, a simple Wix yeah. is just good content site. It's, it's free. Uh, you could take that smart link and stick it on your Wix site. And then you effectively, you have a shopping cart now on your content site. So it's just, a, I just find it as a really interesting way to do it. And if you're, you know, someone that's actually in the promotional products business, like I was a distributor, you know, I can't tell you the number of times I had a client that said, okay, we've got to get, uh, we've got maintenance people that we want to collect all these uh, orders from them so that they can get their size. And they'd give us a big spreadsheet of 200 people and they'd have to gather all the information and it'd be a mess. It, it was always a mess. And, but instead they could have a smart link and they could send the link to uh, everybody and say, okay, you go in and select your size. Okay. And, and if you, if the smart link on a product allowed them to, say, put their name uh, under a logo or over a left sleeve or whatever they yeah. allow them to do, they could, they could put that in. And, and, and so that smart link could basically get them to, you know, the payment can be set up any way you want. Uh, so it's just a, it's just an interesting wrinkle way to sell products without having a full website. I think yeah. that's neat. So, yeah. well, and, and you know, there's so many applications. I'm just sitting here thinking, yeah. About you know, if, if, if that, that person that says, I've got the greatest t-shirt <laughs> idea ever, you yeah. know, but I don't want to go set up a website to do it. Exactly. Uh, you can do it that way. Or, or, or somebody like myself, you know, I've got a book on this timely piece of information and, and just get it out there as a, as a, as a smart link and uh, make it uh, clean and easy to do. So it's, uh, I think that a lot of our listeners are going to kind of perk up their ears to this and go, Hey, you know, so. I, I've been wanting to do this, mm -hmm. or something like this. And this seems so clean and simple and easy to do. Yeah, right. I think so too. You know, you can on Facebook, if they have a Facebook fan page, I mean, right now we take one of our sites and we do integrate it into a Facebook fan page. Uh, and it, so the site will, the full site will come up inside Facebook, which is an advantage, but Facebook has gotten, you know, with all the privacy issues and all that going on right now, they've gotten real used to be a one click deal in our system. Now it's like five things you got to contact, you know, it's, it's getting like that, but just with a, with this smart link, uh, you could run an ad from your fan, fan page or a post, put the link in there. Uh, and you could basically almost do the same thing. Uh, recently we, added and we started off and it was just really one product you could have in there. And then uh, about six months ago, our guys figured out how to put a category in there. And then they figured out how to put multiple categories. So I said, wait a minute, <laughs> guys, we're going to put all of this products in this one little link. Well, you know, it goes through, but so you could put all your drinkware in there or your, all your shirts in there. I, I, I tend to say, fewer is better on things like this, you know, and make the products that you're showing, they've just got to look good. They've got to have great content. So you don't want too many things, but man, I see it as a powerful extension of, of what a lot of folks are doing. Something you can get done quickly too. So nice. Nice. Well, I, Terry, I do have a really good t-shirt idea. It's the, the picture of these two regular guys on a shirt. And, and it, so anyhow, I'm just kidding. You may need to get some, <laughs> you may need to get some models or something. Yeah. So. We probably have to get some, <laughs> somebody with some really good Photoshop experience at least. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> same guys from the picture, same guys from the, uh, from the, <laughs> that's right. That's right. So, so Vic, I, I know you've been kind of explaining some some different things that you've seen and heard. Are there any other real creative uses of these smart links that you've seen people do and use? You know, I know through like social media and some of that stuff like that. But um, I don't know. I'm trying to think of some other things too. But uh, well, we had a, there's a group in the UK that uh, big you know soccer's big over there, so they uh, they uh, did it. Uh, 
uh, recently at a, uh, a football, you know, they call it football. Yeah, it's not, football. Really football. It's not good <laughs> football, but it, they call it football. But it, they call it, they uh, they uh, used it at, a, at an event like that and had people. Uh, uh, and they had all their email addresses and they sent the smart link to them and and let them buy products for that event. Hmm. So they could they could wear could wear it to support their team and so forth. And supposedly it went great. Yeah. So, um, you know, I just, you know, anytime there's an event or anything like that, you know, I, I think about event planners uh, out there and, and, you know, event planners know generally who's coming to their event generally. So if they had one, uh, maybe event planner sends it out to the people and says, what do you, you know, pick this, whatever you want. Or if you're, you're selling to the event planner, uh, you know, I just, I just think there's a world of creative ideas that smarter people than me can figure out how to use uh, <laughs> and folks in the fourth wave, you know? Yeah, exactly. Cool. Um, so we got a question from one of our, our listeners here. Deborah Brown says, uh, can you use smart links on Instagram, Snapchat, and Twitter? Anywhere you can put a link, okay. any place that lets you post a link, you can use it. Nice. Nice. So that so perfect any of those things so yeah in fact a lot of people kind of get uh, hung up on instagram sometimes because you know the links in comments of pictures aren't uh, aren't actually achievable and a lot of people will say you know link in my bio kind of thing mm -hmm. um, I, I found a tool that i love called linktree and uh, it actually gives you so you put that link in your bio of, uh -huh. of instagram and yeah you can have your latest shirt design you can have the your okay. about you can have yeah so anyhow that there we go. It's perfect. You so uh, it's going to be fun to see what people come up with on this. I, you know, I'm looking yeah, forward to that. Definitely. Uh, well, so, we can we can probably ahead. just go ahead and shut it down because Nina said uh, I've learned more in ten minutes here than in the past fifteen years in the industry. So I think oh, that's the oh, oh. mic yeah. drop moment that we can just <laughs> all, all leave with. Vic, you've uh, you've won the internet today. Oh, uh, <laughs> gosh, me and Ken Pardassian are just going to crash it. Huh? So. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> Uh, right. Probably listening right now, thinking of products she can sell as well. So, well, <laughs> yeah. you know, I think things are changing. And uh, the other thing we're doing is we're, uh, I just, you know, I was talking to you guys about Shopify in general. And, you know, on the, on the, for the websites that have, that have shopping carts. Yeah. Uh, you've got Shopify, you've got big commerce. Uh, you know, you, WordPress is the original blog that became a site, content site, but now they, they have a uh, e-commerce app that goes in. It's called WooCommerce. So yep. you have Shopify, BigCommerce, WooCommerce, and there's a host of Z and other ones. Okay, there's tons of shopping carts out there, but uh, we're seeing uh, Shopify is just kicking tail right now. They're up over six hundred thousand uh, users. Uh, their volumes are going up, and what you're what we're also seeing is bigger companies. It was kind of surprising. Bigger companies uh, that used to go and get a Magento, and Magento is another big one, but it's, mm -hmm. it's got about 10 or 11 percent. But I'm telling you, the software is we, we've got two servers with Magento and they're hogs. OK, they're they're, <laughs> they're massive and it, it, it's it, they're expensive and they're you got to keep them updated, you know, and then anybody that hosts a site knows that you're constantly getting attacks on there. Someone's always trying to get in there and mess with you. So you're always having to have that watched and taken care of. Yeah. So they're expensive to maintain and to operate. And, but we're seeing big companies dump their Magento sites and go to Shopify. Hmm. And uh, there's a, there's a higher level enterprise version of Shopify called Shopify plus the point I'm bringing this up for is just to say that Shopify is really doing great. And, and one of the reasons I think they are is that, they have such a uh, material marketing materials behind you. How do you write products descriptions? How do you, how do you do, get your SEO fixed up? How do you do this? How do you do that? And basically any question that you want to get answered they're they're based in Toronto. They are, they are aggressively trying and they say this, we're aggressively trying to improve the e-commerce experience. So uh, huh. that's why, we our app that we're uh it's called tsunami they have to get a different name couldn't use their name but we call it tsunami uh, 
kind of with the wave complex, you know. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah. And but we call it tsunami, and it's and so our app is going to have about 200 products that will. Um, all of our products are, of course, personalized, and so we basically any Shopify store owner can put products into their store from our app and they'll already be set up for personalization. Currently, right now, they have to buy a separate product customizer app that's out there. And then they got to learn to use it. And frankly, I've researched them and, and most of them are quite complicated. You almost have to be a developer. If you read the blogs, people go, golly, you have to be a developer to operate this damn thing. <laughs> and you know, and it again for the for the small store owner that's trying to make some money, sitting there all night long trying to operate a website, trying to learn how to do some some funky, you know, uh stuff like that with apps and stuff. It's just it blows my mind when I try to read some of this crap. And I do it every day, but but so we think that this tsunami app with our uh, it's kind of a two for one. They, the products would be set up for personalization. We've broken it down a little bit further to in that, you know, you think about all the stores that are out there. So you, what you really have in there, and I kind of learned this from you, frankly, <laughs> is that you have, you have the, y'all call it the custom gift market, right? Yep. You call it the custom gift market. There's that, but there's also the promotional products market where I came from. And that was my focus. So we've broken down our products into those two categories, these 200 or so products. So, uh, and we've also learned over the last five years of setting up probably 10,000 products for online personalization is that the simpler you can make it for people, the more they'll, the more it'll work. Okay, you just got to be thoughtful and, and boil it down when you create these products to be sold online, you just got to boil it down to the simplest possible. Give them the options they need. Take all the other crap off the screen so they're not confused. And so with the custom gift market, we'll have several templates up there that they can select and use. And of course, they can put their own in there, but they can select and use one of our basic ones uh, and uh, for design to be a custom gift, you know, maybe it's Father's Day or what have you. Then on the promotional product side of the, of the equation, uh, you know, that's even easier, really, because I was in that market 20 years. So you got an 11 ounce mug. Well, the first template is, well, you let them upload anything they want. So it's blank. Second one is, OK, they can up, now they can upload an, a logo and put it right there on the right spot. And it, they upload it and it goes there. They don't have to move it around. It just goes in the right spot. Second, the third template would be where they have. They can add text underneath that. Maybe the fourth template is where they can do those two things. And then on the other side, put it, put an image or whatever, you know, upload an image on the yeah. side. And then maybe a fifth one is where multiple images and so forth. So we've learned, we call those pre-designs. Yeah. So we've learned that when the more pre-designs you can give folks and show them up front that, so they can select what they already are kind of thinking they want and not make them do the work then it'll work it'll they'll sell better yeah so yeah yeah everybody uh, thinks that they're they're super creative but when given a blank canvas uh <laughs> they struggle mightily to get you know but they if they have like you said that pre-designed template then they can be creative and add their own text that says mom you know <laughs> about 10 percent of the folks use go to that blank template and do whatever they want about 10 percent. about 60 percent of our business and we did over a million orders in november through our the network i'm part of yeah uh, about 60 percent were just standard products in other words it didn't even have the designer in it we call them just print on demand yeah yeah they, they click on a whizzy wig what you see is what you get skips the designer and goes about 30 percent were these pre-designs which has continued to grow as you know as the fourth wave people get in there and say oh we got to make this better yeah, we got to figure this out and think about what they what with simplified user experience with a with high touch, you know, high touch with emotion, uh, adding adding things that uh, unfortunately us guys don't have much uh, experience with, but the ladies do. I rely on them to help us do this. Uh, <laughs> nice, nice. So, 
Hey, uh, so we, Terry, before we, we kind of keep moving on here, we, the regulators are, are, are on fire today. They've got some great stuff, and I want to just kind of share some of these. Some of these are comments just to share. Some of them are comments that we can discuss here a little bit. But uh, Luke says, uh, seems like it would be very cool to use some smart links in combo with timely events for some quick sales. Uh, and he's got a link to National Today with the holidays in June. Yeah. Um, so yeah. that's a great idea. Good idea. Um, so question here from Deborah Brown. She says, how can you avoid getting lost in Shopify with 600,000 users? Well, well, the 600,000 are, uh, you won't get lost. The 600,000 are people <laughs> you're going to be selling to. I mean, I, from my perspective, I think it's wonderful. Yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, no, it's, uh, they're just, that company is just investing in software and making it better and better. Every, every week I see something new from them. Yeah. So, yeah. They, and, they, so. Totally. And, and my answer to you, Deborah, would be, you know, it, it's kind of kind of akin to me is like it's the same thing with Facebook. I mean, there's two billion users on Facebook and you have to set yourself apart somehow by uh, yeah. by doing something different and, and getting to your tribe, so to speak. So go ahead, Vic. Yeah. Well, you know, like Tesla has their side out there. Red Bull has their side. There's, so there's a lot of big people that are using that part of that 600,000. But She's right. She brings up a good point. You know, these big companies like that, Facebook, and you try to get customer support from them and Shopify, you know, they're big and it's, you know, you can't get that one to one the Shopify system is that they have, you know, we're, we're set up in their system as a Shopify partner. And so yeah. typically we take care of the customer service and answer the questions and, and for folks that, so they don't get lost. And, and, uh, but the resources that, we as Shopify partners and the clients, our clients have, is just amazing what they've done. It's just very, I can't, I can't compliment them enough. Uh, nice. nice. Well, and, and, and you know, something we talk about here all the time, you know, you, you can't say I'm, I, my customer is everyone, you know, you're going to zero in on that niche and, and, and promote to, to those folks specifically. And, and, and that's, that's how you, that's how you find your way out of the woods, I think, in, uh, in yeah. being lost out there. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, yeah. If, in fact, Vic, uh, you know, you were talking about some of the services. I, I just got a comment here. Shopify is a great host of professional platform, but you still need the expertise to create your site. Small shops often have unreasonable expectations that oh, are, yeah. you know, and something like Etsy. It's not much more feature rich and much more scalable, but those aren't always the most important things for small shops. And, and I think that's where, you know, a company like yourself comes into play, Vic, you know, you, so tell us a little bit about iPersonalize. What uh, what is that all about? Well, that I mean, our uh, our story is that we simply we create personalized gifts and promotional products for people to sell on Shopify, Magento, Big Commerce, WooCommerce, and so we let people sell. They can have their own products personalized if they have a store, and they want us to work with them to integrate in and, and enable them to have. Uh, our product designer and customizer on their site, we can do that, or they can sell our products and through our Tsunami app. And, uh, you know, so we're all about, uh, you know, creating uh, personalized gifts and promotional products. And we, I believe in digital printing. I believe that uh, it's the wave of the future. Uh, I like it because it's sustainable. Uh, it's, you know, it's more environmental good. I, you know, I, my personal, uh, Plant. My personal uh, cause is that, you know, I just bugs me about single use plastic. I'm, I'm from the promotional products industry. So when I used to sell to event planners and, and I are in that, you know, you sell them stuff for swag bags to give away. And then, you know, I go home and say, hey, what'd you do today? Well, I sold this and that. They go, oh, you sell trinkets and trash. You sell swag. You sell Chotskys. <laughs> <laughs> and it, kinda, it always kind of hurt my feelings, you know, and I was like, golly, you know, the, it's terrible to be in a business where people deride your products. And and so that's kind of got me. In, but I always noticed that when you personalize a product and put somebody's name on it, how how all of a sudden immediately it goes up in value, you know, because psychologically, people do not want to throw away something that has their name on. It. If it's a good product, they just won't do it. Uh, when, when I got out of the promotional industry full time, I had a guy, I must have had 50 uh, binders that, you know, that I'd been given, got sent to all the time. Anybody that's in that business knows how it is. You get this stuff all the time. But I had one that had my name on it. And I, that's the one I kept. 
because I'm not going to, because psychologically they say, I don't say this, but they say <laughs> it's like, it's like death to throw away something. It evokes feelings of death when you throw away something that has your name on it. So if, if you're trying to be in the advertising industry and you're trying to get impressions and that's what people spend their money for on advertising is to get impressions, whether newspapers or what have you. Mm -hmm. If you're trying to get impressions, you want that product to be around as long as possible. And, you know, some people have their name on a mug and they pick it up every day and they go, oh, yeah, that's my <laughs> name. Oh, yeah, we're all this way. That, I, and I got this and they gave it to me for free. I mean, you know, it's just the way we are. And but but now because of digital technology, you can you can create products for an individual. Yeah. And uh, and I'm trying, you know, the promotional industry is always 15 years behind in technology. It always it's underserved, and they say in technology. It's always way behind. I mean, it's just to beg them to the late nights. Can we start using email, please? I mean, you know, really, can we start using email? They weren't, you know, everybody's using email. Can we start using it? You know, it, it, but it's coming. It's just behind in that industry. I think the custom product part where you are, uh, Aaron, is is a lot, is is moving much quicker there. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I hope uh, all those Reggie Award winners uh, feel that way about their award-winning coffee mugs. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, we need to uh, we need to put their names on it. I guess. I guess we should. No, I think <laughs> it has their award on them. It's so it's all good. <laughs> so yeah, so Terry Saunders from uh, CMO says uh, personalized items don't usually grow legs and walk off. Yeah, I don't. Right. My my coffee mug that says Terry, you know that uh, I don't use that one a whole lot. <laughs> they don't know where that went. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, the other the other aspect of this is that you know besides your name, the pet market where you put the people. I mean, put people put pictures and names of their pets on things. And that's now that's emotional, and and those and your names are too. But anything that has high touch emotion babies obviously weddings mm -hmm. all of these things first engagement baby's first step you know all of these imagery that that evoke emotions you can do with digital printing that's why it's so great and you you, you couldn't do it with the old analog long run stuff it just wasn't practical so it's, it, it'll make all of our businesses much better i think when it's all transferred over from digital from analog to digital yeah yeah so yeah i think on. it's it, very, very interesting, interesting. <laughs> yeah, totally, totally. So Deborah Brown says, uh, "Great advertising technique: print a T-shirt with a company name. No one throws away a T-shirt." Um, I would, uh, I would agree with that. I have a, a closet full that uh, I look at all the time and go, "Huh, I never really wear these." <laughs> yeah. But you just can't bring yourself to throw them away. Yeah, and you yeah. see it. Yeah, you see it. It's a uh... Human psychology is just the way we are. So. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Cool. So, what 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 else is going on in in your world, Vic? What's uh, you talked about tsunami? You talked about uh, some of the things you got going on. Anything else new? I, that sounds like a lot, but oh, <laughs> well, you know, I, one of your uh, listeners had commented about you know how about setting up a store and small. We, we're going to do a a special when we set up a brand new Shopify store. Uh, we're going to, uh, you know, typically it'd be around two thousand twenty five hundred dollars to set up all the products and all that. We're going to offer a special of about a thousand dollars, and uh, we're going to go ahead and throw our entire database into the being available. And so, basically, it's going to be a turnkey deal because you're right. And we're going to, you know, we're going to, for about a thousand bucks, we're going to let people do that. We're going to let them. We're going to. We're going to put. We'll have all these products available. We're going to interview them for about an hour or two, talk to them about what their strategy is, try to talk them down off the wall about doing 5,000 products, and try to get them to focus on a few <laughs> that they can really make look good. But we're, we're going to give them all the digital tools they need. Plus, we're going to give them, uh, as, you know, with our 3,500 products, we've got a, we've got a deal called a mock-up mock -up generator where if, if someone just wants to test their ideas, they can – they can go in and grab one of those products, create a mock-up. Uh, the system will actually generate print-ready artwork for them, and they'll email it to them. So they have a thumbnail image. They'll also have print-ready artwork that's whatever size it needs to be. And and then and then with the push of a button on that same system, they can email that if they need to use it as a proof uh, to somebody. So we we think that folks should that are don't know what they're what product they're going to do. We think they should 
start with one or two products and test the product ideas by using this and send it out to family and friends. You know, or if you're going to go in a local area, if you're going to go and try to get a company down the road, you know who they are and you know, they got a lot of employees and they have potential, you know, go get, uh, go find out who the boss is there and put his picture on something and, and, and grab their logo and, and send them. You don't have to make the product, just send them a mock-up. If you get it to them, send them a mock-up and test your ideas and, and build a customer pipeline. You know, even before you go into business, that's the lean startup philosophy. Uh, build your build your customers because you can always get things made. Print the print the gift will do, make them for you, right, Aaron? And, yep, absolutely. There's, there's plenty of ways to get things made, uh, but we're excited about our mock-up generator and all that. So we we think we're bringing in an entire array of tools, digital tools, for people, no matter what level they are, uh, to you know to capitalize on digital printing and right. uh, mass customization, mass personalization. Let's call it mass personalization. It's about yeah. people. It's not about components and products. So. Uh, that, I think that's the big takeaway here. Hey, Vic, we are running out of time. So okay. tell our, tell our listeners how to, uh, to find you. Yeah. Well, well, I'm, I'm Vic V I C at I personalize is my email. It's I P E R S O N A L yze.com i couldn't get ize.com <laughs> it's i personalize yze at the end.com um, our website's out there too with a lot of information just shoot us an email contacts love to talk to you you know uh, like i say we're kind of on a cause here uh, we're not trying to be ink soft we're not trying to be huge we we just want some good customers that'll help us do what we're doing and then we'll service uh We'll service the uh, Shopify big merchants. And if anybody wants to make some products, maybe we can stick them in our app for you and resell them for you. It's a, it's a, it's a good angle. Uh, nice. That's coming. So awesome. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Appreciate you letting me have this time with you today. Yeah, it's great talking to you, Vic. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you. All right. Cool. Fantastic. Uh, excellent. Fantastic. I, I love uh, what, Vic, uh, what Vic's doing. And I think that uh, it's going to, it's going to touch a lot of people out there uh, who are our listeners and, uh, and beyond. Yeah, definitely. I, I, it's, it's some great stuff. I've had an opportunity to uh, work with Vic, uh, you know, through my uh, work with pick the gift and stuff like that. So um, definitely some cool stuff, cool opportunities, cool platform to, uh, to use and uh, have several pick the gift customers that have I personalized stores and, and whatnot. So it's, uh, it's great. I, I highly recommend it. And uh, Eric uh, posted for us Vic's email address there in the in the comments and lots of opportunities to, to synergize and, and do some fun things with Vic. The, the regulators, Terry, we're, we're, like I said, we're on fire today as, as usual. So um, I tried to get to as many comments as we could, but uh, we didn't get to every single one of them. Uh, hopefully we answered most of the questions. Uh, so if not, uh, just shoot us another message on there. We try to always get back in and, and clean up any open comments after the fact or, or keep that conversation going on Facebook at facebook.com slash two regular guys. For those of you listening in the podcast version, uh, there's always more great information when you get into our Facebook page there. So um, good stuff, Terry. Let's uh, let's go ahead and wrap it up here. And you got to get off to a trade show there. And, and I do see indeed. Uh, for anybody watching uh, live, you, you see that I'm a, uh, I'm in my luxurious uh, hotel room here at the <laughs> Magnolia Hotel in Houston, Texas, and uh, and yeah, the trade show has started. It's I'll get there about an hour after the start, but uh, we've right, got well. a lot of capable people in the equipment zone booth uh, keeping, uh, <laughs> keeping things going. All right, well, guess see, yeah, we're, we'll we'll get you out there to see if anybody's looking for a direct to garment machine. So um, I imagine there's a few people in the Houston area that uh, Terry can help out. So yeah, uh, Terry, I'm going to put you on the spot. What's your booth number? Any idea? It is booth number 530. Ha! Look at you go. <laughs> I love it, man. I was trying to throw you for a curve. All right. Well, a couple things going on uh, for me. Uh, still uh, every Saturday, still doing small business Saturdays and, and loving that uh, opportunity. Last week, we talked about email campaigns. And uh, this week, I'm going to actually talk about email once again. We're going to talk about transactional emails. And I've had people say, well, what the heck is that? So tune in tomorrow morning, bright and early, 7 a.m. Central time for uh, for that show. If you just head over to facebook.com slash Aaron um, Also, that is out on the podcast world as well. So uh, uh, 
I'm not competing with two regular guys, Terry. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it, it's uh, you could find the podcast version of my Small Business Saturdays over at smallbusinesssaturdayspodcast.com. So that's Small Business Saturdays with an S and then podcast, all, all one long word. And that'll take you over to uh, the podcast matrix that I use to host that. And you click on uh, one of the episodes there and you can subscribe all sorts of different ways. Tune in, Apple, Google, blah, 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 RSS, you know, all of the usual suspects, Spotify, just like you can with two regular guys here. Um, and then one last thing, uh, Terry, I wanted to give a quick shout out to uh, Sharon Phillips. Uh, she's a regular listener here at uh, two regular guys and also uh, over at my small business Saturdays. And she is actually uh applying for a contest and, and part of that contest was having a business plan and uh, she's been nice enough to uh, let me be a little bit a part of that just trying to help her out and give her as many tips and things as, as I can to get her kicked off and have a, a great business plan and hopefully win this contest so uh, good luck to her oh, that's awesome. what about you Terry what do you got coming up well I'm uh, right now at uh, Houston at the ISS show at the equipment zone booth as you as you mentioned uh, two more days of the show the sun is shining the first uh, the we did our full day seminar a couple of days ago in uh, torrential rains but uh, it's uh, everything is good here in Houston so coming out to the show <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be doing a direct to garment seminar tomorrow uh, at 10:45 at uh, here at the, as part of the ISS program June okay. 14th, so next week, Aaron, I'm going to Baltimore. I'll be doing an Equipment Zone Roadshow, uh, not only doing DTG, but we'll be doing sublimation and solvent printing as well, and it's all free. You can sign up for it at the Equipment Zone, equipmentzone.com. And uh, I have upcoming classes for my uh, Complete Screen Printing Business course. Chicago, I'm going to be uh, at Atlas Screen Supply June 22nd, 23rd, so I have a pretty full month. And uh, I'll be uh, back in Phoenix at Workhorse Products July 20th and 21st. And all my 2019 events you can find at terrycombs.com under tour dates. All right, terrycombs.com. Check it out. Uh, real quick, uh, Eric, our, our producer who's been manning the comments here and always does a fantastic job for us. We really appreciate all his help. Uh, he was on the promo chat deep dive. So promo chat's a... a Twitter chat uh, that happens over there. And um, so you want to check Eric out, you can go over to, uh, let's see here, you can check that out at the Promo Kitchens Facebook page. And uh, we'll have a link in the comments here and, and we'll get that posted up into the show notes as well. But uh, but check out Eric on that deep dive. Uh, he, he's always very insightful and appreciate everything he does for us. Uh, Terry, you want to kind of list us off some of the trade shows here to, to get us uh, closed out? We, we haven't done that in a little while, so we want to make yeah. sure everybody knows what's coming up. Sure. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, I'm at the ISS show in Houston right now that runs through Saturday. ASI Chicago, and that's that's a big, big event that I think Aaron, you and I both have spoken at in the past. Uh, mm -hmm. That's July 10th and 11th. Uh, NBM show Meadowlands or slash Sakaka slash New York City area. <laughs> <laughs> Just take the train. You'll get there. <laughs> Just take the train. That's where, if you're going to New York City, uh, that's where you change trains. <laughs> yeah. So uh, that is July 25th, 26th. I'll be there. Uh, NBM Long Beach, back to Long Beach, California. It's right upon us, August 15th through 17th. And uh, ISS show, next one coming up is in Orlando, September 5th through 7th. And then, of course, we have all these events listed on our website yeah definitely so good stuff coming up uh great great shows definitely uh i don't get out to as many as i, I used to but uh you can always find terry at pretty much every single one pretty much everyone <laughs> so he's he's carrying the two regular guys flag out there for it so <laughs> exactly. that, terry. all right terry well we've uh, had a great show lots of great information lots of comments from the regulators uh, about uh how great the information was you know it's kind of a uh, we kind of look at it as it's science, really, you know. In, in, it is science here. Yeah, so. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we have come to the close of another show. We want to thank Vic Autry for his time and joining us and all the great information. So uh, check him out over at iPersonalize, and that's with a Y at the end, iPersonalize.com. We really appreciate his time today. Yeah, and we also, uh, as always, want to thank our show producer, Eric Campbell. That's Eric with an H at the end. Uh, you can find him at ericcampbell.com. And also thanks to uh, our sponsor, Imbrilliance, and their family of products. Excellent. Yeah, definitely. Thanks to them. So next week, Terry, we've got a great show coming up. We're going to uh, step away from the micro microphones once again. And, and uh, this is always one of my favorite shows that we, we've done and are going to continue to do. I think uh, we're pretty much... Uh, 
booked up with uh, with this for every quarter. So um, it's women in uh, the industry, women in decorating. Uh, we're still trying to kind of get the exact <laughs> title down, but uh, Christine comes in and, and takes over as the host for us and, and brings on three other young women that uh, will help with kind of talking about topics that are important uh, for our industry to tackle. So uh, we're going to talk about self-promoting next week. And when I say we, they will be talking about self-promoting. We'll, we'll start the show and then move out of the way. So uh, that's exactly. always that's great for us. It's a little break and I just love listening in and learning and I get my, Terry, you'd be pr proud. I get my notebook out and uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> and do that. So looking forward to that next week. Tune in, make sure you join us uh, same time every Friday. <laughs> All right. So until then, I'm Terry Combs. He's Aaron Montgomery. And we are the Two Regular Guys. Thank you for listening to Two Regular Guys. Check out our website at tworegularguys.com. That's the number two, regularguys.com. You can also interact with us over at our Facebook page, facebook.com slash tworegularguys, or send us a tweet, twitter.com slash tworegularguys. And we have a YouTube page. You can find all that from our website, tworegularguys.com. Thanks for tuning in, and we look forward to spending some time with you again next week.